CNN Philippines, welcome back. A former health undersecretary says the department's former chief, Janet Garin, colluded with Sanofi Pasteur on the use of Dengvaxia. Our Rex Ramitio joins us live for more. Rex, tell us how did this supposed collusion take place? Former Health Undersecretary Ted Herbosa says that he and the former Health Secretary Enrique Ona were kept in the dark on the discussions on the implementation of the dengue vaccine in 2016. This contradicts what Garin said in an interview on Friday that Herbosa, Ona, and other former health uh, officials were knowledgeable of the issue. In fact, they were even against what Garin is planning since the vaccine was still on its uh, experimental stage. Uh, he adds the vaccine was still on its uh, phase three of development stage when it was injected on students in April 2016. In fact, Herbosa says it must still undergo a long process uh, of uh, development before it can be implemented on phase four. He also says all of the health officials were surprised when uh, Garin announced the plan to implement the vaccine on uh, January 2016. Herbosa also argues it's unethical for any government official to meet with a supplier or distributor of a particular product when it was due by then or before its bidding uh, uh, process. This is in response to Garin's admission that she met with Sanofi Pasteur officials sometime in 2015. Herbosa suspects the deal was rushed for two things. First, the administration party might have used the funds for the 2016 presidential elections. And second, Sanofi wants to uh, immediately sell its product since two other pharmaceutical giants in Japan and the United States are also developing the same vaccine and planning to sell it as well. Herbosa also believes that the vaccine was way overpriced and not cost-effective. That's why he believes that the Garin must be criminal liable with this mess. My. Rex, tell us more about Herbosa's claims that Garin is uh, criminally liable for this mess. Well, he says that uh, Garin committed um, intentional negligence on this uh, particular issue when uh, he, uh, she met with the uh, Sanofi Pasteur officials in uh, 2015. And until now, we're still getting the side of uh, Garin to further shed light on the issue. Mine. Rex Ramitio there reporting to us live from Quezon City. In other news, the defeat of multi-terrorists in Marawi raises the question of whether there's a need to extend martial law in Mindanao again. Military and police officials believe there is. Our George Cahiles tells us why. The extension of martial law in Mindanao is necessary. This is the recommendation of both the police and the military ahead of the expiry of martial law in the southern Philippines by December 31. Interior Undersecretary Catalino Cui says the PNP recommends the one-year extension due to continuing threats from terror groups. We endorse the recommendation of PNP for uh, one-year extension of uh, Marcelo Los Mindanao, uh, principally due to the you know, existing, uh, may continuing threats pa sa, sa Mindanao from the uh, terrorist groups. And at the same time, uh, it will help, it will hasten the rehabilitation of uh, Marawi City. The military echoes Kui's statement, saying that the remnants of ISIS-inspired Malta Group and other local terror groups continue to recruit members in Lanao del Sur and nearby provinces. The Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters still carry out violent activities in central Mindanao. The Abu Sayyaf Group and sympathizers still exist in Basilan, Sulu and Tawi-Tawi provinces, and communist rebels have increased their attacks throughout Mindanao. Also, increasing violence initiated by the left is something to watch out for and something that we have to prepare for and confront. That's part of the reason why martial law may, need, may uh, be needed to cover other areas where potential terrorists are uh, in hiding. The recommendations of both the PNP and the AFP have been submitted to the president. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says President Duterte is expected to ask Congress by December 15 whether to extend or to lift martial law. If the president decides to ask for an extension of military rule, Senate President Coco Pimentel says he will immediately tackle the matter with his colleagues. 
Senators Zubiri, Escudero, Villanueva, and Poe wish to hear a security briefing from authorities before deciding on a possible extension of martial law. Minority Senators Aquino, Drilon, Ontiveros, Pangilinan, and Trillanes are prepared to oppose any move to extend military rule beyond 2017. Partilist Bayan Moon is concerned that extending martial law may lead to more alleged human rights violations in Mindanao. Earlier, House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez told CNN Philippines he preferred martial law to stay in Mindanao until the end of the president's term in 2022. George Cahiles, CNN Philippines. President Duterte is not through with communist rebels after his relationship with them turned sour. The president declared the New People's Army a terrorist organization and ordered its members mass arrest. And now the left is pushing back. Our senior correspondent David Santos has more. For those who are out temporarily, you just uh, maybe zero in now because uh, any day I will order for their mass arrest. After unilaterally terminating the peace talks and declaring the communist movement as terrorists, the president is now after the rebels' peace consultants. But not too fast, cautions a lawyer of the National Democratic Front. Arrests must be made through the judicial process, no? and it is through the courts that arrests uh, can be made. In a motion filed late November, the Justice Department is asking the courts to cancel the bail of the freed NDF consultants and bring them back to jail. State prosecutors are citing the president's order to call off the peace talks. A Manila court has given the lawyers of couple Benito and Wilma Tiamzon five days to respond. The Tiamzons are said to be the most ranking communist leaders prior to their arrest for murder in 2014. But with the negotiations turning shaky early this year, the Tiamzons have been keeping a low profile and rarely seen in public. The NDF says they need to be extra cautious. Nalaman nila eh, na... Meron pang may nakakasang arrest operations, even without the arrest orders. Huh? It was the military that arrested the Yamzons after years of painstaking covert operations. They could well do the same now. Pero we have to understand that uh, itong agreement na ito, may mga procedures that have to be followed. And we will have to follow yung procedures. The NDF insists they have yet to receive a formal notice. The government wants to terminate the talks. And it will take at least a month before this becomes executory. It's a bilateral agreement. It is not to protect one side. It is to protect both sides. For now, lawyers can't say if the consultants have gone into hiding or if they will still submit themselves to the jurisdiction of the courts. They say all legal options are still open. David Santos, CNN Philippines. But yesterday, the president hinted at resuscitating the canceled peace talks with the rebels. Speaking at the 84th anniversary celebration of the Labor Department yesterday, the president cited the need for the NPA to stop collecting revolutionary taxes from businesses. He added the government can shoulder the expenses of the CPP during talks. Here's the president in his own words. They have to agree to stop to impose revolutionary tax. We can, we can subsidize the talks and even the, the billeting and all. Ako na ang gastos para, but you have to stop. The Duterte government is bent on stamping out corruption. In the same event yesterday, President Duterte said he will fire an entire commission next. It's unclear what commission that is, but he says he believes all its members should be fired for corruption. Now on Monday, I will fire about one commission mismo. Lahat sila ay wala pakialam ko nakisali lahat o dalawa tatlo. You have to go out. Because I do not think that uh, it will exist without your knowledge. The president has fired the other officials before. Among them, Dangerous Drugs Board Chairman Benjamin Reyes, Cabinet Undersecretary Maya Valdez, and Sugar Regulatory Administration Chief Ana Rosario Paner. The President also asked Interior Secretary Ismael Sueno due to corruption allegations involving the country's purchase of fire trucks from an Austrian firm. Coming up, our Olympian Mansoor Del Rosario, the first Filipino and non-Korean to receive South Korea's Taekwondo Man of the Year Award. And what happens when a rapper does the weather forecast? Well, Chance the Rapper shows us just that after the break. 
Ah, may comment ulit siya doon sa dengue vaccine controversy. No? Sabi niya, sampahan na si Noynoy at si Garin ng kaso. So, well, um, yan ang topic ng um, Senate inquiry starting Monday um, headed by the committee of um, Senator J.V. Ejercito. No? They will look into the dengue vaccine controversy at pinakatawag nga nila ang mga officials or former officials na involved dito sa dengue vaccine program na ito. Um, si Marina Watson is watching us from California. Hello to you. Si Tasio Baligwat says hi from Milan. Si Riclino Tayag is watching from Seattle, Washington. Si Arnel Pese says hello, watching from Iloilo. And si Abby Esteban Usman watching from Dubai. More stories up next. back with more stories. Heads up, motorists. The MMDA will start a dry run this Monday, December 11th, on the proposed carpool lane on EDSA. Private vehicles as well as motorcycles carrying at least two people will be the only ones allowed to use the carpool lane that's on the leftmost lane of EDSA. Now, this should encourage carpooling to reduce the number of vehicles on this problematic main road. Once the carpool lane is officially implemented, the MMDA says violators will be apprehended using the no-contact policy and will be fined 500 pesos. Rapper The Chance, or Rapper Chance, shows he can do more than just win a Grammy Awards and host Saturday Night Live. He joined weatherman Paul Conrad on the air and delivered his own version of the weather forecast. Watch this. Hey, um, so we asked if you'd be willing to do the weather, and you've been more than agreeable. More than, more than happy. It's really nice of you. So yeah. uh, here's my advice. Uh, I've been doing this for 20 years. All you have to do is really just smile, be relatively sexy like I am, and then just read some numbers and you're good to go. I'll try to do both. <laughs> all right, good luck. It's all yours, man. You're on. All right. Uh, well, as you see up here in Kenosha, it's uh, 19 degrees. Yeah, you're on it. 19 at Waukegan as well. Uh, similar 19 over at O'Hare. 19, uh, uh, actually 20 now at the lakefront. Uh, 19 still at Midway. A lot of 19s going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, and uh, due to the Peruvian purchase, apparently Peru is in here too. Yeah, nice, good got form, Peru also. In there. Great uh, form. <laughs> also, uh, just yeah. in case I have to take some, I got yeah. invisibility yeah. cloak. Look at that, he's gone. Now you see him, now you know. If I have to check out books at the Hogwarts <laughs> Library, could do that. Uh, St. Louis is also uh, a part of uh, Illinois, apparently. Yeah. Um, We've got, uh, today it'll be mostly cloudy, a high of 34, west winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, also tonight, uh, light snow, uh, low 23. Uh, every snowflake is different. They actually have like different <laughs> DNA, like yeah. people. And they uh, all matter. Yeah, they, uh, each one is individual. North wind winds, uh, northwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, Saturday, we've got a little bit of morning snow, a high of 27, and Sunday it'll be partly sunny uh, with a high of 34. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, that was pretty impressive, right? Nice. It's easier than it looks. Yeah, it wasn't hard at all. No, yeah. He did a good job for a first try. Chance made his appearance to help with the TV station's annual toy drive. In sports, Barangay Hinebra is gearing up for the PBA Philippine Cup while a Filipino Taekwondo legend makes history in South Korea. Our sports desk correspondent, Paolo Del Rosario, has more. Yes, my Filipino Taekwondo legend, Monsur Del Rosario, receives a historic honor in South Korea. The World Taekwondo Federation named Del Rosario as the 2017 Man of the Year. With the recognition, he becomes the first Filipino and non-Korean to receive the honor. The two-time SEA Games gold medalist and former Olympian was also inducted to the Hall of Fame as one of the best fighters in the world in the 80s. And the Filipino sports legend tells Sports Desk his award is dedicated to the Filipinos he represents. It's really an honor uh, to be recognized for your contributions to the propagation and the promotion of the martial art of Taekwondo uh, around the world in our, and in the Philippines. Uh, I'm very happy and overwhelmed that uh, Korea uh, notice uh, our contributions to, to them uh, and propagating their martial arts uh, all over the world and also in our country. 
Meantime, Barangay Ginebra head coach Tim Cohn is already looking forward to the new season of the PBA. The league's winningest coach shares his mindset in, the lead, in leading the Gin Kings in the upcoming Philippine Cup. The winning never gets old. It never gets tired. You never get tired of winning. You can get tired of the losing in a real hurry. And uh, for us, it's just the day-to-day. -day. You know, you just focus on the day-to-day. -day. Do the day-to-day -day stuff, and, um, and that'll go. And, you know, I'm motivated day-to-day -to, -day to come out and, and uh, meet with these guys. And um, it, it, that never gets boring to me. We have more of the week's top sports stories on Sports Desk Weekend. I'm Paolo De Rosario, sitting in for Miko Halili. Back to you. Here's one for the books, all three Miss Universe queens on one stage for a good cause. Our Trisha Tarada gives us a look. It's literally a beautiful night at the Miss Universe charity fashion show as beauty queens take over the runway. They're wearing works by world-renowned Filipino designers. Spotted on the runway are Miss Universe 2017 Damien Nell Peters, together with Miss Universe 2015 Pia Wurtzbach and 2016 winner Iris Medina. Contestants from this year's pageant are also donning world-class pieces. Filipino beauty queens and former Miss Universe runners have also walked down the ramp. We're very proud to be a Filipino because, alam mo, like the other girls from different countries, dumating sila para tumulong sa project na to. We're very, very um, excited about it. You could see how the whole universe helped one another. And just when everybody thought the show's over after the three queens showed up, the real stars of the night came out. These little girls are the beneficiaries of the Hope for Change Foundation. They received gifts from the three Miss Universe winners and even walked, posed with them on the stage. What's giving me the goosebumps is it's a, it's a historic moment for not just all the beauty queens to be together, but for the Miss 2015, 2016, 2017 to be all together, having the same battle cry of inspiring and giving hope. Proceeds from the event will go to the charity program of Hope for Change to send less fortunate students to school from elementary to college. Trisha Terada, CNN Philippines. That's what's happening in.